Now, listen up. There are a few days each year, and most people don't know this, but there are a few days each year where the snails come out of their little holes and their little nooks and crannies under the leaves and between the cracks in the pavement, and they go masquerading about as slugs. This is usually uh, not very easy to do, but they do it. They leave all their organs and rather um, slushy bits um, back behind in their shells, and they go out about in the world looking just like slugs. Their eyes are all curled up, up in their little slushy, smushy bodies, and to the casual observer, it would just seem like that day there are more slugs than normal on the walls and on the leaves drooping down, leaving weird, sticky trails, and it, it might seem odd to you, but there was a young man sitting at a cafe slurping at a double espresso, or is it ex- No, it's definitely espresso. Don't say espresso. That's wrong and bad. And he noticed that while he usually saw only one slug passing by at around 9.45 each morning, today there were three and a half slugs. He jotted this down in his journal and, and tucked it away in the back of his head for another day. Another year, perhaps. Anybody who hadn't been to the small private library under Jeff's Green Grocer on East 75th Street and looked at the small collection of books on the third aisle would have never known that there were some well-authored and well-introduced and forwarded and indecised. What is it called when there's indexes well-written in the back of these books about this phenomenon? These books exist just because the phenomenon exists, and it had been well-researched uh, by a man short-statured and well-girthed with many flowing robes and low hats on his very broad brow. And this man had also noticed these slugs going by, but he noticed that these slugs were a slightly off shade of mauve, like a damp band-aid. This erased some suspicions. Now, this was back in 1962, And he also was drinking a double espresso at almost the same cafe, which is then around the corner. And he jotted things down in his notebook, which which was a little thicker. And he had better handwriting, because everyone had better handwriting back in those days. This is just how it was. People took more pride in such things. It was just more becoming and more unbecoming to have bad handwriting. This man, much younger at the time, ended up following one of the slugs down the sidewalk on hands and knees with a magnifying glass and began poking and prodding at it with the blunt end of a pencil, and realized that every time he poked it, two little eye stalks would jut out of its face just a little bit, and he realized something was off about it. And his worst fears were then confirmed. These were no slugs. These were something much more sinister. Anyways, so then this dude published all his books with his grand revelation about this sinister plot about all these snails masquerading as, well, slugs. Uh, And no one cared about it, and they all got shoved into this little library below a deli, and nobody ever read a single one of his books, even though over 5,000 of them got printed. Most of them stayed at the publisher's office. Uh, 17 of them were at the little library. And um, besides the publisher who read about half of each one of them, no one ever read any. And to this day, if you know where to go and sit and drink a little double espresso decaf, if you like, you can see just about two and a half too many slugs rampaging down the street, just willy-nilly, no one doing a thing about it. Go, see it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. It still happens. Nobody, the media's ignoring it. Everybody is. Except for that one guy. Go write about it in your journal.